Alright guys, I am back with my TNA Impact Wrestling Review for May 31st, 2012. <laughs> this show was horrible. Um, but before I get into that, I do want to mention a couple things just in the news of the wrestling world lately. Um, instead of me just making a video saying, oh, Orton got suspended or whatever, I thought I'd talk about a few things I heard. Um, for fellow Ring of Honor fans, Davey Richards says that he's going to retire in 2013. Um, he said something about how his life would have to be in really bad, or he would have to be in a really bad place to still be wrestling after 2013. Um, that's pretty horrible news. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. Maybe he'll release another statement or something in the future, but yeah, that's what Davey Richards says. Um, on to the Orton suspension. Now, this guy, it's his second offense, so he's gone for 60 days. This really hurts Dolph Ziggler, because with Jericho gone, he was supposed to work a program with Orton. However, now that's not going to happen either, so it hurts Ziggler, but two suspensions already? I mean, that's pretty bad for Orton, seeing as he's still young, and he'd probably be in the company another 10 years at least, and he's already been suspended twice, one more, and he's out. So yeah, I mean, I don't know what they're going to do with this. I'm wondering if they're going to maybe stop his push a little when he comes back. Doubtful, I know, but it could happen. But then I hear all these stories about Orton, how one of them wasn't really an offense. He just like trashed a hotel room and smoked a joint in public or something. And I mean, the guy's crazy. He just does whatever the hell he wants, I guess. I've heard about him doing all types of crazy stuff. Some article from a former writer said that uh, one time, back in gorilla position, um, Triple H and Stephanie were standing at Gorilla, and Orton took a piss in a trash can. And <laughs> I mean, the man hears voices, so you never know what you're going to get with Randy Orton. But I just thought that was a funny story, and uh, Triple H said, what the hell are you doing taking a piss in a garbage can? He says, before he goes out there, he always has the urge to pee, so that's Randy Orton for you. But anyways, uh, on to TNA. Like I said, this show, what the hell was this? This was <laughs> so much stuff on here made no sense at all. So I'm just going to get right to it. The show opens up with a ton of pyro, and it's still not as much as Hogan gets. Maybe tonight Hogan didn't have as much as he normally does, but over the past two weeks, Hogan got more pyro than they opened the show with tonight. That is the truth. Um, then we get Bobby Roode versus Sting in a Lumberjack match. Uh, we have Lumberjacks like Anderson, Garrett, uh, Jeff Hardy, Chris Sabin, Eric Young, Angle, RVD, all the usual suspects. Um, I noticed that Crimson has a t-shirt. Crimson Army. I just thought that was worth mentioning. Because is Crimson really over with anyone? Who's going to buy that besides his family and friends? Uh, Bobby Roode taps to the Scorpion Deathlock. That was the match. I didn't care for this match at all. Um, he beat the champ. Where does he go from here? Sting came back, beat the champ. Where does he go now? Um, I know a lot of people want me to make rants on this about Sting winning. However, I gotta say, I'm not really surprised. It's no surprise that TNA um, loves these older guys like Sting and it's a stupid decision, yes, but is anybody really surprised they did this? I mean, they're known for doing this type of bullshit, so who can really be surprised at this point? Uh, it's just more typical TNA stuff, so just more crap. Get used to it. There's probably going to be a lot more coming. Uh, then we get Hogan. He comes out. He says Sting is Impact's number one man. He makes it Bobby Roode versus Sting for the title at Slammiversary. I hope to God they don't put the belt on Sting. Rude really needs to keep the belt until Bound for Glory and then lose it to James Storm, but who knows? They want these ratings. And in their mind, Sting draws these ratings. I don't know what the hell to make of this. Um, I just try to erase this type of shit from my mind, to be honest with you, uh, because it's horrible and it's a joke and it's embarrassing to watch this type of stuff on TV. Uh, Sting at 53 years old beating Bobby Roode the champion. I mean, what is that? What are they doing? So then we get Madison Rain backstage. She's getting all dressed up for her crush. 
Uh, Bully Ray comes out. He shows footage of him laying out Joe Parks. He calls him out to the ring. Uh, Joe, he calls Joe Parks' mother, father, and abyss cowards. Parks gets in the ring. Uh, Parks says he's not a fighter. That's his brother Chris. You know Abyss. And he's all nervous when he says it. Um, I did enjoy that. Bully says he wants to enter a plea of guilty uh, for leaving Abyss for dead. Uh, Joe Parks snaps, grabs Bully, but Bully says he will sue him. Parks challenges him to a match right now. Bully says they will fight at Slammiversary. Uh, we get a hype video for Crimson Streak. Don't know why. Austin Aries versus Chris Sabin for the X Division belt. Um, maybe it's just me, but Austin Aries looks like he put on a lot of muscle in a very short amount of time. Um, let me know if anybody else thinks that, but this definitely looked like he had put on a lot of muscle here. Um, Aries wins with a roll up. This was fine. Hogan's backstage talking to Taz earlier today. Uh, they're blowing smoke up each other's ass. Taz is going to be a gut check judge since Flair is gone. Um, apparently, I don't know if anybody else knows about this, but Alex Silva wasn't supposed to get a contract, which is one reason you haven't seen him on TV at all since he won. Uh, apparently, Ric Flair went out there, went into business for himself, and just changed his vote. He was supposed to vote no, and he changed it to a yes, <laughs> which is pretty awesome. And uh, because gut check is a work, like everything else in TNA and in wrestling, uh, they, you know, they were pissed that Flair did this, and Alex Silva now has a contract, and they got to try and do something with him. But there's way more problems I have with this gut check shit coming up later. Uh, the judges are backstage meeting. It's Bruce Pritchard, Al Snow, and Taz. We get a Brooke Hogan promo ad. They keep showing this picture of Brooke Hogan, who's going to come out later. I don't even think this was her. This looked nothing like her. Um, and then they talk about how the fans can vote for Devon's opponent for the TV title uh, between Anderson, Robbie E., RVD, and Jeff Hardy. So who do you think is going to win that? Um, Dixie comes out, says September 10th at Slammiversary. She screwed the dates up. Um, they're going to start the TNA Hall of Fame with its first inductee. Uh, she puts over Brooke, being the executive of the knockouts. Brooke comes out, says she's taking this seriously. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised by the way she was talking if she didn't know one of the knockouts' names. If she couldn't name one of those girls, it wouldn't surprise me one bit. Um, I also noticed that this is a big girl. Her legs alone are the size of Dixie Carter. Um, Dixie doesn't put over the AJ Styles angle at all. Uh, doesn't even mention it. Backstage you see Kazarian and Daniels watching, and apparently they have more evidence. Uh, then we get Devon versus Jeff Hardy. Big surprise, he won. Um, I know they're trying to do this fan interaction stuff, but I just personally don't really care for this at all. Uh, Robbie E. and Rob Terry interfere. Jeff's up for the Swanton. They push him off the top rope. Uh, then they try and beat up both guys, but Jeff Hardy and Devon eventually beat them up. And then Jeff Hardy and Devon do some kind of secret handshake thing in the ring. I don't know what that was supposed to be either. Um, pretty bad. Uh, we see James Storm on his farm talking about Bobby Roode. Then we get gut check with Joey Ryan. And this is so annoying to me because I do like Joey Ryan. I love the character. He's like a 70's porn star guy, which I said last week and then they mentioned it tonight on Impact. Um, that's his thing. He's kind of a arrogant Hollywood guy. And I thought he was great. Um, so they're doing gut check. Uh, Joey Ryan says that 87% of the fans said yes to Joey Ryan on the poll. 87%. Uh, fans are chanting for him in the impact zone. Uh, Bruce Pritchard says no to Joey Ryan. Al Snow says yes. Uh, he gets that 30 seconds to cut a promo. And Joey Ryan says that Pritchard ignoring the fans makes me question your contract. I thought that was an amazing line. Um, and then Taz says no. So they said no to a guy who 87% of the people um, on the website wanted. Now these aren't just regular casual fans. I don't go to the TNA website. I could give a shit about it. 
These are their diehard fans who take the time to answer their shitty polls and tell them what they want, and they don't give them what they want. The fans are chanting for this guy in the impact zone, and they didn't give him what they wanted. This is just another reason. The Sting thing, not giving uh, Joey Ryan a chance, just constant crap makes me not care about any of this. And, believe it or not, the show got worse. So then we get Christopher Daniels versus AJ Styles. Uh, AJ wins with a moonsault, Scorpion Death Drop. Kazarian attacks him afterwards. Kurt Angle runs out. German suplexes Kazarian. Uh, puts him in the ankle lock. Christopher Daniels low blows him. Kazarian and Daniels start to work over Angle. They try to zip tie him to the ropes. And the things keep breaking. This was a complete fail. They keep trying to zip tie him. And he just breaks out of them. They couldn't even do the spot. So it was. It looked horrible. I was embarrassed for every single person involved watching this. Uh, it was just so stupid. Daniels uh, improved by hitting Angle with the title, uh, hitting AJ with the title, and then he cuts a promo. He's got some type of recorded phone conversation between AJ and Dixie, where uh, Dixie doesn't want Serge to find out that they're meeting uh, her husband Serge. And then all of a sudden, Dixie runs out and says, Make them turn it off. Make them turn it off. She's freaking out. And then she says, What the fuck? And they censored it. And that's the last thing we see. And I'm thinking the same thing. Exactly. What the fuck did I just watch? Thank you, Dixie, for saying exactly what I was thinking. This was so stupid. Their big live show. We got Brooke Hogan. We got fan interaction. We're going to give the people what they want. It's just another load of crap that they're not going to do. So if you have some type of hope for this, just get rid of it now. Because it's going to be more of the same. And now we get the big awesome match of Sting versus Bobby Roode at Slammiversary. So yeah, it was just a sad show all around. And then Sting doing that pathetic uh, dive over the top rope. And then replaying it like three times. And the fans chanting TNA like that's something awesome. He just jumped over the top rope. CM Punk does that in like every single match. They have guys on the X Division who can do that and much, much more who don't get that type of reaction from the people chanting or whatever or the attention from Hogan. If they took those guys and made them, uh, gave them more exposure and put them over like Hogan puts over Sting, <clears throat> the fans probably would go crazy for them too. But instead, we get Sting returning, and everybody's got to, you know, go crazy about it. So, yeah, this show did not like it. That's it, guys. That's my review of this week's TNA Impact. Um, <clears throat> I hope you liked the video. I'm going to go watch Snow White and the Huntsman now. Uh, that's supposed to be an awesome movie, so I'm looking forward to that, and I'll be back here in a couple hours with my review of that movie. So I hope you guys liked the video. Leave your thoughts on this week's Impact in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Bye.